I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Yes or no, did you ever take banned substances to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. I had no prior knowledge of the planned assault on Nancy Kerrigan. I am deeply sorry for my irresponsible and selfish behavior I engaged in. Guys, what's up? Welcome back. Oops, the podcast. Julio Gallarotti, joined by my friend and confidant, Ryan Lynch. Hi. He is jacked. Hi. He is ready. Uh, we have another friend and confidant here as well, uh, who we spent a lot of time together uh, this, this past weekend, the weekend before this in Boston, uh, ripping it. JC Mendoza, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. Yeah, what's good, everybody? Yeah, thank you for the, I appreciate it. I'm happy to be here. It's a sign you got a beautiful home, man. Thank you, bro. Pull it up just a little bit. A little bit. Pull it closer. Are we good still? Um, yeah, JC's a great comic. Um, I remember I met him a couple years ago, probably at, at your Street Talk comedy show. Oh which yeah, is probably. A very successful and popping show franchise in New York City, and we've sort of been gigging around the city ever since. Thanks. And uh, we've done a couple of gigs on the road together, and it's been a good time. So good to have you in the stew, bro. It's good to be here, man. This is, I feel like this is the first time I've spent time with you. Out like inside of New York. Yeah, yeah. Usually we're in Emmaus, Pennsylvania or, or in Boston. <laughs> but it's, it's nice to do a little, a little hometown bonding. Dude, 100%. Or at the comedy club. This is oh, our true. first like non, I guess it's a sort of comedy related. Yeah, so. it is. But, but not stand up related. It's different though. I got sneakers on. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I'm, I'm comfy. Well, I hope we, uh, you know, spend some quality time together as 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 time goes on as well. I feel bro. it. I feel. I feel. I feel the <laughs> beginnings of a, of a of a friendship, man. Yeah, I feel and it. I know that sounds corny, but it's a, it's a nice thing oh, to yeah, feel, yeah. especially in comedy. You know how this should be, man. I can I smell know. it generating between the two of you. Yeah, it's like a little aura. <laughs> that also might be. I, I rode a bike on the way over here. That might be my socks at this point. I'm not gonna lie to you, but it is nice. what it is. Either way, the perilous bike ride. Um, all right. Well, it's funny. We were we drove up and down to from Boston uh, together, and that mm. drive is sort of like. I was saying to you in the car, mm. it's a drive that's so familiar to me in every way that it's not that it's not really enjoyable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I used to run like long distances, like in my early twenties, and I had a route that I would run. And the longer I started running, I would have to like change my route because if I, I it doesn't mentally totally. stimulate me anymore. So like I, it was like a two mile thing right by the water. It's really nice, right by Astoria Park. Really? I would just go back and forth two miles, but I would I would go crazy because I need to look at something different. The repetition, it's I could crazy. never do that. Like people running on tracks like long distances is insane to me. It's so mundane. That's like serial killer behavior. <laughs> my That's I don't know how people do that. No, it's true. It also applies to the workout playlist. Yeah, facts. And bro, like one time I had a during COVID, and granted it was COVID time, so maybe it's a little different given the guy the benefit of the doubt. But oh. I paid this trainer to like get, give me a like workout routine basically and he like made me a video which was very helpful but that was the only video and he's yeah. like when you're done like if once you feel comfortable just do that again yeah and i'm like dude this is like too much repetition this is way too much repetition man like i don't even know and the grant i'm sure there's some science behind that being able to work but i think there's also science about you being like you should change it up a little bit yeah too. i think so. at least when it's when i'm doing something that i don't want to be doing like working out or running then i need some i need any little thing to get me by you know what I'm saying? I need something different, a little, like a song pump. If it's the same, but, you know, I'm also the type of person, if I go to a restaurant, I know what I'm getting before I, I go. Right, right, it's right. the same thing every time. Do you guys, oh, but it's, okay, so it's like something you're familiar with. But yeah. When you guys go to a restaurant, I want to say you guys, uh, JC's lovely girlfriend, Samantha, who's also a comedian. Back Samantha Santos, um, shout out. Shout out Samantha Santos. When she, when you guys go to a restaurant, do you look at the menu before to try to get excited? She does. I'm a big, I go there, I'm like, whatever's happening here is what's happening here, and I feel like this is the experience that the restaurant had in mind when it built itself. Like, oh, this, <laughs> we want people to come and see the menu. Oh, look at that. But she's like, no, let's know everything about it. She's looking at the menu like five business days in advance. <laughs> and she doesn't even... Hillary does that too. Yeah, she, she loves that. That's hilarious, dude. Um, well, you have a wedding coming up, you said, in a yeah, couple so days. Yeah, it's on Thursday. It's in a couple of days. So JC brought something up that I think is very relatable. He has a wedding in a couple of days. It kind of snuck up on him. Oh, yeah. And he now is in a period, like he's in a window where he doesn't have enough time to get his existing suits dry yeah. clean. So he's just going to have to go out and cop a whole new yeah, suit. Yeah, yeah. And when I say this wedding <laughs> snuck up on me, it was gentle reminders for Samantha for three months. Hey, you should think about your suit. <laughs> you should really think about it. I'm like, ah, you know, yeah. nothing about nothing. And here we are, wedding in two days. I have a suit that I could wear. It's it's not going to be dry. So now it's in press. I'm in press zone. So it's going to have to be pressed. I know the sleeves are too long because it pissed me off last time I wore it to the last wedding we went to for Samantha's family friends. 
And now here we are, same situation. And I've, I just, I've done nothing to better myself. How many days out are we from the we, wedding? Today is Tuesday. The wedding is on Thursday at five. Oh, okay. I was going to say, if it was on Saturday, I feel like you might be able to rush Oh, yeah. It. I could, I could go ASO something, but like, and everybody's ASO, ASO. You know what? Where I fucked up? I really convinced myself that I was going to work out. And like, oh, I don't want to get a suit for this body when I'm going to lose like seven pounds. Mm -hmm. And then I just haven't been to the gym in three years. So I don't know why this was going to be the time I started. Dude. And now here we are. That is so relatable. <laughs> I, I have to get suited up for my wedding. Yeah. And I have no idea um, what I'm going to wear yet. But Hillary has an idea. And she's like, we should start figuring that out soon. Yeah. And in my head, I'm like, well. I still have to make my body transformation yeah, yeah, before yeah. we do that. So I don't even want to consider now, granted, measured. Dude, the wedding is a slightly more uh, motivating event. Yes. As far sure. as that concerns. Like concern. your wedding. Right. If yeah. I can't get it together for that, it's over. Yeah. Deeper questions. Have, like what would cause you to get it together at that point? It's Yes, exactly. If that I would I be on Family Feuds, like number one reason no, why right. you to get lose in shape. Weight as yeah. A, yeah, to get back in shape as a man. Fact. My yeah. wedding. Ding, I think ding, that ding. would probably be number one. Yeah. Or no, number one would be getting single. And then number two would be the opposite. Right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Getting that's single crazy. Like that. I think that would, I would be like, oh, it's time to, because the un unconditional love you feel in a relationship that's going towards marriage, it's like, well, if I don't lose the pounds, what the fuck are they going to do? You know, they, they don't even care. Exactly. But um, everybody else does. The streets, <laughs> the streets care. They care deeply. So you got to get it together for that. I would think that would be number one. The streets deeply care. The streets care. Okay, well, we, we got off. Uh, I, sorry, I went on a little, I went all over the place because I was just so curious about what you're up to. <laughs> but back to the drive. So uh, New York to Boston. The our area around New York, super familiar with it. I'm coming in and out of New York all the time. On the way to Boston, you pass by where I grew up in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. So I'm so familiar with that whole area too, yeah. especially going around, playing sports, blah, blah, blah. And then I went to school in Boston. Yeah. It's the drive is my entire life. Yeah, that's a, that's a that's a lot. That's a hundred heavy. whatever. I think it's two hundred miles, maybe maybe two hundred ten miles or something, or maybe even less. But dude, like, yeah, you have a personal story. Wrapped couldn't up be in, more familiar. And every kilometer of that drive, you have a personal yes. story tied up in it. Yeah. So anyway, so we spent a lot of time chit chatting, which is a thing that happens uh, when you go on the road with people. Hannah Dickinson was with us too. Lynch oh, was also with us. Great yeah. weekend, by the way, guys. Uh, Shout out Lynch. Fun show. Boston. Shout out to Laugh Boston. Uh, Lynch made his own arrangements, which I want to talk about. Yeah. Uh, Hannah was with us, but Hannah literally slept the, whole the entire car ride. It was I told it was admirable. It was it was, like, it was like a very impressive. I couldn't have slept that comfortably if I had an intention to. <laughs> if I had melatonin and a goal in mind, I could not have slept this comfortably. <laughs> she was. The crazy part about the way that Hannah slept, she slept, but she also still had her seatbelt on. Oh, I don't even know. Wow. He, that was. I'm like, oh, she's been through some stuff. Was she leaning <laughs> against the window? No, she was full laid out, back seat, seatbelt on. I don't know how she remained comfortable enough to stay asleep, but it was a testament to her will. I feel you know, like if you were to get into an accident, that would rip her body up worse than you, if she weren't to wear a seatbelt. Yeah, but they say when you get into an accident, dangerous territory. Know, they say when you get into an accident, it's better to be all loosey goosey. Did That's you say, say that? That's why the drunk driver always survives. Yes, I heard that. The other people die. But if the seat really belt, unjust, like the seatbelt, like locks. Mm. Like if, if it was locked, that's basically being tight for her. Yeah. But that's good. You don't want to fucking, but yeah, I guess, I, I guess it goes both ways. Because Whatever. I don't know. That's just what If you're loosey goosey, theoretically, if you were to be loosey goosey in the seatbelt, wouldn't that be advantageous? Yeah. But I guess they want you to the be secure. The way that you would be sitting would probably be the problem for, for Hannah in that right, situation. Right. Cause she's like, has it on his laying yeah. Yeah. to your point. Luckily, um, didn't have to test. Didn't it. have to worry about <laughs> it, bro. She has been through some stuff. That's yeah. that's the funny yeah, yeah, thing yeah. about what you're saying is that like she has two or three stories that you're are saying, yeah. not even. I don't know if she talks about all of them. I know that th th there's at least one or two, but mm. then the third one, I think. So it's just funny that you nailed hit it right on. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. It, it's it's a, it's crazy how the small things about people's lives that you see after you hear them on stage. They, they make sense. Like they start to, right. the, the pieces start to mesh. I remember the first time I had Jared Waters at me and Samantha's apartment. And I have a joke about how um, her dog came up to me for the first time. And that let me know that other guys have been in the house because the dog was so friendly <laughs> with other people. And I had told the joke about it. And then Jared came over and met the dog and the dog was super friendly. He's like, it's like seeing the joke come to life. And I love so that. much more about you makes sense. I really love that. No, dude, totally. That's so true. Um, but dude, yeah, I got a very solid briefing on what you're all about, what you're up to and stuff. So I've, I have some things that I'm curious about. Oh, that I'd, perfect. I'd like to ask you about. Um, well, first of all, I want to mention this, everyone. I've been a very big hypochondriac lately. Oh, no. I've been a hypochondriac. and that I sounds terrible. 
I need to snap out of it. Yeah, I hate the energy. Yeah, that's a scary place to be. I haven't been sleeping. Oh, no. Uh, I've been waking up in cold sweats. It's very odd. When did this start? <sighs> Over the weekend, maybe. Like, there was like a couple days where it didn't... It, it, I think it started when I got super high on Saab versus Podcast. Uh-huh. Actually, I remember which I mentioned. Yeah, How recent yeah. was that? I don't know if that is going to be out by the time this comes out, but it was the end of last week. I got really high. And I don't usually do that, but that was the point of the show. And I have never, I have not recovered. Yeah. That's probably it. <laughs> that's probably, that's, that's probably it. Started. It has triggered psychosis in my brain. Uh, not to poo poo that term, but you know, I don't feel like myself. And do you ever, do you ever, are you a germ freak at all? I'm not. I'm the opposite. Like, I don't ever believe I'm sick until I'm physically unable to do something. Uh, Samantha's the opposite. Samantha always feels sick and she's always worried that she's sick. But me, if I don't believe I'm sick until like, I fully believe if my mind doesn't believe it's sick, I'm fine. It, it's true. Like thinking and worrying that you're sick makes you sick. Like I'm yeah. getting sick because I'm afraid of being sick. Yeah. It's ridiculous. The cause of my illness is being afraid of being ill. Yeah, can, I think regardless of the mindset, if you feel a scratch in your throat, like the scratch. lightest little mm-hmm. scratch, mm-hmm. that's going to blossom overnight yeah. into a sore throat. Yeah. And that's going to happen regardless if you have of a good mindset, mindset or not. No, that's true. Because that would uh, otherwise would imply like the germs know that, yo, this motherfucker's is <laughs> down right now. Yeah, they're not. Time to strike. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The germs are wild predatory. That's a crazy thought. Uh, mm-hmm. But I mean, also, maybe they are. Maybe they are. They do prey on the weak immune systems. Yes, so they do. They do. Something there. We'll see. I don't know. Um, What's like your worst case scenario that you're thinking in your head in terms of like how your body's feeling? Terminal, some sort of terminal illness. Oh, God. <laughs> That's horrendous. I'm sorry. That's and awful. then you start you start Googling everything and suddenly... Yeah, that's the fuck. You know, that's fucked up. Your symptoms are everything. Yeah. You could have one of many terrible things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, life's too short, guys. You can't Google that. You know you that can. you're going to get... You're going to die. Yeah. <laughs> Samantha, Googles you're gonna die everything. tomorrow. And she she always goes to the worst case scenario, but in that there is peace for her. She's like, oh, it's just brain cancer. That's fine. I can go, to, I can go to the doctor, and at least we can start taking steps to fix it. But that's immediately where her mind goes after one quick trip to WebMD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's it. But it's, it's so it's funny. There's like differing styles between you and her, and it's funny to hear where what the strengths and weakness weaknesses are. So, for yeah. example, she seems to be very prepared. Yeah. But she's a little too prepared when it comes to diagnosing herself. Yeah. I I think I have both of your guys downsides of both of those things. <laughs> I'm not prepared, but I'm also afraid of being sick yeah. at the same time. Yeah. So Samantha will she's a very much all right, well, let's take steps to make the thing better. Where I'm like, hey, what are you gonna do? Yeah. Let's, I'm right. a big what are you gonna do guy. Totally. And uh, it, there's there's value in it, but you can't what are you gonna do everything because that's how you end up with no suit two days before a wedding. Dude, no, you, no. you might want to start drinking a little magic mind, man. I yo, I'm mm. I'm I'm looking for those like little little type t- tips and tricks to try to lock myself in. Those are the um what the, those mental performance shots, right? Mental performance shot. Those are good. Sharp mind, lower stress, which I do need better energy. Uh and dude, they're really it's a really solid, nice thing to sip on. Yeah. Um if you'd like one. I'm gonna I might need one yeah. before I go to Macy's today. Thank yeah. you very yeah. much. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna save it because I know I'm gonna need it when the time is right. That's good. I don't know how you take it. I like to mix it in with just a little bit of water. Oh yeah. Mm. I like to dilute. I like Anytime to dilute. I see something this small, I'm like, oh, it's supposed to be taken like a shot. It just like reminds me of like a nip that you would get like on a plane. Like one of the little, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is meant to be taken all at once and make it a fun time. It's giving healthy. Like that's <laughs> the vibe. And you can throw them in your backpack. They're chill. But I sip it either. like a Paisan. Like when they, then they hand shots out to, and like members of my Italian family get the shot. They think they're just supposed to sip on it. Really? Because they're used to drinking out of little <laughs> cups. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Uh, so this is kind of the vibe here, but I think we do have a promo code in the episode description. So check that out. Magic mind. That actually reminds me the first time, like uh, in my family, we drink Coquito, which is like a, a very specific Puerto Rican holiday drink. And I had been in college for a couple of years and we do it every year, but I had started to drink in college. And when we came home, my mom poured the Coquito in shot glasses because, you know, it's supposed to be little amounts at a time. And I got it in shot glass. So I just took the whole thing. And my mother's looking at me like, what the fuck have you been doing? <laughs> <laughs> what have I been paying you to do? That's when I first exposed myself to my mother that I was a de- degenerate. <laughs> How Puerto Rican are you? Honestly, I'm... I didn't feel like I had a super Puerto Rican experience when I grew up. And the more, the older that I've gotten and the more Puerto Rican people that I've met, because there wasn't a lot of Puerto Ricans in my town. Um, but the more Puerto Ricans I met, oh, I, I do have a, a more Puerto Rican experience than I realized I had when I grew up. Are both of your parents Puerto Rican? No, my dad is Cuban and my mom is Puerto Rican. And, you know, my dad, they divorced. So I, my mom was, I lived with my mom and I saw my dad all the time. But, you know, I live with my mom. So like her music and mm-hmm. stuff that she played was very, very prevalent. 
Yeah. And my mom was a very much New Yorker where like this time of year, when growing up, like she'd bring out the big flag, nice. put it on the hood of the car. She'd have really? like, the, the Koki bandana. Nice. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, the first word, the first song I remember knowing all the words to is It's So Hard by Big Pun. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So I have my little things where I'm like, oh, I, I did get a unique, I got a yeah. experience that is true to me. Siete, ocho, siete. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, well, but I, I'm still not Puerto Rican enough to the point where sometimes you bring up very specific things because you're so with that reggaeton <laughs> and I act like I know it just because I don't want you to think I'm a fraud. That's hilarious. So there's some things that I'm like, like even Siete, ocho, siete, I think I've heard that, but I couldn't, oh, I, yeah. I'm assuming it's an area code. Of that the is island. the area code. They and, always, they always say it in the songs. Yeah. And I know that from context clues, not because hilarious. that's not knowledge that I that I possess. I I'm, I'm I'm impressed that you feel comfortable to admit that. <laughs> um, well, dude, yeah, I mean, look, the people who aren't the thing always have to be extra about it, which yeah. is what I am. I am but it's like sincere, you know what I mean? Like I can sit by myself and like watch and listen to all that shit. Everybody who listens to the show knows about that about yeah. me. I like drinking and watching Bad Bunny videos until the wee hours of the morning. You would get along with all of my friends. Yeah. That's like a big, that's that's <laughs> definitely a thing that, that, what, do you have a song that like started you on this path, like a specific yes. moment? What was it? Did yeah. You? So, okay, there's two moments actually. Moment number one was in 2000 and I want to say six. Okay. I was teaching tennis on Long Island. My roommate, Gustavo, shout out to Gustavo. Shout out big Gus. He's Venezuelan, but he listened to all that shit. And that was sort of, the, I don't, I don't know. Exactly. This is the first boom. It's right. Like right. Daddy exactly. Yankee, yeah. Exactly. So, you know, it was, it was like, I, anyway, so he would listen to all this shit cause he had the car and we'd drive to work to and from together and we'd play all these songs like, so, Esta noche te travesura. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that one. Traves. That was one. And then there's a song by Yoel y Randy who are still very active. Legends. Uh, and it's called En Venezuela, and it's a great song. En Venezuela, me encontré una nana, me. I don't know. Uh, but it's really good. So anyway, so I got into it then, right, for like a couple of years. Then I fell off it for like yeah, a decade. Yeah. Then, I, it fe- to be fair, it was still going, and there's a lot of great songs that happened, but like in the mainstream, it fell off for like a decade. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Because yeah. there was a big moment, and then it kind of went quiet, and then it roared back. Interesting. So what was, so I'm curious to hear about what the moment where it rode back is because I remember the moment where I got really interested in it again. It was from the Cardi B song. Oh yeah. I like it like that. The Bad Bunny verse on the Cardi oh, B yeah. song. I was like, who's this guy? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, he was, no, he was flowing. Jambea, jambea, pero no hablan. Hold it. Dude, it's so hard. Was that like his first uh, big splash? into he mainstream prob- going back he probably had other ones that were big but like for like non reggaeton seekers that was like your first real yes exposure people to that me. look like me that was their first exposure yeah to bad yeah for real yeah and, that, and the video to that was hard too he had the port the whole Dude, puerto rican the jersey fucking, on the bald sick. he had a crazy look he was yeah, sick he in was that man, one bro. um yeah so that was the first uh exposure to that so then i was like oh this is this guy's pretty cool yeah, yeah, yeah so then i started looking up a couple songs i started really liking them and then it gradually just like swallowed my playlist yeah <laughs> like it was on my sort of like my playlist at that time would have been a very heavy like young thug future it still yeah. is i have yeah, yeah, yeah. that playlist also but that's like my backup playlist now to yeah. my like latin artist playlist so there was that and then like slowly over the years i've just happened to collect different things so like i was in the galapagos islands and i got really bad food poisoning ah and I just threw on the top 10 thing because mm-hmm. it's part of Ecuador. So it's like Spanish speaking country or whatever. And all these artists were on there. And I heard the song so many times that they just got stuck in my head. So like Carol G. Yeah. You know that song Machinon. Like that's a, whatever. So I'm not going to sit here and make you do the <laughs> thing you do. <laughs> so like, that one I was going to, I was going to, I was working up the courage to tell you yeah. that I didn't know that one. I know anyway. Carol G. Yeah. She's cool. She's cool. So anyway, couple. So over the years now, the whole genre has sort of taken over. And I still don't speak Spanish at all, uh, but I don't need to know what's like going on to enjoy the vibe. Yeah, know? that's that's the one because I mean Puerto Ricans in New York very big stereotype that we don't speak Spanish, mm-hmm. and in my case that is that is very true. And you don't have to really understand the language to like it's a vibe of the song. It's, but you it's say like shit perfectly. Yeah, I can like if I have a translator. Like I've worked Spanish speaking jobs. Like I worked for the NBA in Mexico where it was my job to translate, so I can communicate anything. Like I, I pretty much know how to pronounce it, but. Hearing back once motherfuckers start like ripping, it's like let's let's all slow down. Interesting, and especially okay, so like Puerto Rican Spanish is like pretty can be pretty fast. Yes, and it's also really unique. Yeah, it's and they're like dialects between like islands, like Dominican Spanish and Puerto Rican Spanish are indistinguishable. Right, right. You know, right. like I told my Cuban grandmother that I had Dominican friends, she's like, oh, they're not they're not even speaking Spanish. Hilarious. You know, it's Hilarious. a whole different thing. Well, they say that about Puerto Rican Spanish, yeah. and to be honest, I 
prefer, at least when I'm listening to songs, it to be somebody with a Puerto Rican accent. And there's very obvious um, things that you can notice. So yeah. one of them I've noticed is like E-R-A-R turn into A-L. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. E-R-A-R turn into, give me an example. Like, um, it, like literally any f- Bad Bunny song. Like, hold on. Yeah, like, like w- one example like that I know off the top of my head that my friends made fun of me for, like there's a very popular disco called Aros con Gandules. And like the the it's like they're grand duels like when you read it. It's right. grand, but like I learned that like we pronounce it in my family, gandules. Like we don't even say the R. And that's oh, a that's a specific to Puerto Rico thing to my knowledge. Okay, dude, here's a good example. Uh Bad Bunny, Vuelva Candy B, song off of his new album. Mm-hmm. The beginning and this is like a very straightforward one. So like he, the the word Dior, mm. right? That's a fashion designer we all know. Mm. He goes, Mucha Diol. <laughs> Mucha oh, diol, Gucci. I never peeped that. Right? Yeah. So like that is a thing that I've also been told is a thing. Like the L replaces the R in a lot of situations. So like if I'm listening to somebody and they're not doing that, I'm like, oh, this dude is like Colombian. Like I don't, fu- I don't fuck so with them. That's so funny. <laughs> That's so funny. You've become a like a, a name five songs. <laughs> yeah. type of, you're not even you're not even Boricua for real. Yeah. Bro. Okay. Funny. Here's another one. Like oh, he says oversize. Mm. Right? He goes, "Bitengo el size." Oh, well. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. That's true. <laughs> it's interesting. And that's so interesting, especially because especially Spanish is a language where the R is pretty prevalent. Right. Especially when you get the double R and you start rolling and shit. So for them, yeah, that's, that's a very interesting thing to pick up on. I'm sure there's other ones too, but yeah, anyway. Yeah. The point being, I just, I guess, I've noticed this shit. This that's, point. I mean, that's even, to a, at a point, it's better than speaking Spanish. Is that that's You're that immersed in the culture to notice those very specific <laughs> things that I would never think twice about. Did you read this online, or did you re- did you stumble upon this? So somebody mentioned it to me at some point, and mm. then since then I've sort of picked up on it. And sometimes when I will sing, I'll sing a guy's verse who is not a Puerto Rican guy. <laughs> like a Puerto I'll Rican. do it like a Puerto Rican. <laughs> yeah. Guy. So there's an example. Uh, uh, that song Pero Negro. You know that one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so like I'll I'll say fade. Is, how does that he pronounce it? Feed fade. I don't even know. I can't remember. He's a Colombian guy. Uh, I will say his lyrics the way that a Puerto Rican person would say them. That's funny. Which I have noticed as I'm doing. That's very funny. Yeah. I do that sometimes with like the word straight. Like, cause I, I listen to a lot of, I'll say scrape when the <laughs> rapper doesn't say it. But I'll say scrape and I don't even talk like Scrape. That I'm scrape, man. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I, this is like ultimate, I mean, ultimate random version of code switching that I'm yeah. doing. It's like, I'm not. I don't know. It's deep, but yeah, at least I'm funny. not doing it walking around. Yeah, that's how you know it's just, it's it's truthful to you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that that yeah, that's yeah. it's real to you. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that little deep dive into our Puerto Rican roots and my Dog, lack if you, thereof. If you came to my my family reunion because we did one like ten years ago in Puerto Rico, my family would be oh, fucking yeah. obsessed with you. Bro. They would think it was funny. They love it. They love it. It's fire. So I was gonna ask. Yeah, have you been much? No, I've been. Well, the last time I went was I went for Thanksgiving like two years ago. And uh, now this Thanksgiving coming up, my mother's getting married in Puerto Rico. Uh-huh. Do that there, that's gonna be a lot of fun. Exciting! That's sick, dude. That's cool. Man. That should be really fun. Very, very cool. I hope to go someday. Yeah. Oh, you've never been? No. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. You, it's right there. I know. It's I know. so easy. You would love it. You and Hillary both love it. It's no beautiful. passport required. Yeah, it's easy. awesome. There's so many things to do. Yeah, you'd have a fucking grand old time in Puerto Rico. <sighs> I got And the food, bro. It's it's Good. it's borderline untouchable. Wow. I love Puerto Rican food. Fuck yeah! But you saw mofongo, bro. Oh yeah, I've had I've had, island. I've had that. that actually, is, you get some real, real authentic, from that, real good shit. Fuck. What's your favorite thing to eat there? Mofongo. What is that? It's like, it's like a, it's like a plantain. It's like a platano mountain with other things in it. It's like oh, smashed up platano, like mm. made in. It's I'm explaining it horribly. But you do a, a a good like seafood mofongo. It's delicious, and it's like in Puerto Rico. It's that's that's my recommendation. I can send you a bunch of places. I've actually not had that. I was thinking of another thing, and the thing that I was thinking of is this like cow intestine soup that I was just not for me, dude. I hate soup. I'm not a soup guy. <laughs> oh yeah, imagine throwing some cow intestines. Yeah, in there. I mean that sounds yeah, like, like something it. that we would do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it sounds like something we get real busy in. But my favorite when I go over there is mofongo, and then arroz con gandules is like rice and, and peas, but it's like specific to Puerto Rico. It's really good. Sweet. Um, do you do you find that you have some sort of natural ability to tolerate heat and humidity <laughs> being Puerto Rican, or is it more a product of your environment? Situation? I think it's a, a product of my environment. I also just prefer it to be hotter than colder because I don't, I hate being cold. I don't love being hot, but I'd rather, if I had to choose, 
I don't know if I'm predisposed to it, but I do feel like I run hotter, mm. if that makes sense. Mm. But I, I'm way more sensitive to cold weather. Got I don't know if that's a product of, of my genetics or I'm just a bitch yeah. in the winter. I love it. What um, about you? Do you feel like you have a specific weather like that you've been predisposed to? No, I would just all I'll say is that like extremes suck in either direction. Yeah, for sure. But I probably prefer it to be a little cold than to be a little too hot. That makes sense. A I little. I, most people probably do. Yeah, I mean, too hot. It's 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 rough. But too like I don't I can't do anything outside if it's too cold. If yeah, that, you can tell yes. me to come to a barbecue in a sweltering day, and I and I'll be like, yo, it's fucking hot. But I'll go if it's like six degrees. You're, I'm not leaving, yeah, no matter yeah. what you say is happening. Well, which is funny the way it goes back and forth away. Okay, Cause let's let's do this exercise. So everybody loves light jacket weather. Yeah, fire. You yeah, get to course. fucking accessorize. Yeah, it's some, some, some shit. Layers. You have that like two weeks out of the year part of your closet. Yeah, it's the most playful you can get. Yeah, with accessorizing. I do love the wardrobe. time of year where, where I can get away with wearing like shorts, like I'm wearing now, but like a hoodie. I like that shit. Hard. That's the best time of year. That's I like that shit. That That's shit is San hard. Diego. Lynch, yeah. Lynch will post a welcome to shorts and hoodie weather. <laughs> 100%. I didn't even know that. It's That's two, how you know we're meant to be friends. It's a two-week window for That's sure. That's a beautiful time. Yeah, and some flip-flops that. too. Get some flip-flops, get in there. I love that so much. Sometimes I'll force it and I'll just be hot up top. 100%. Because, because I, I love the aesthetic. Totally, dude. Okay, so I would argue as you start to get hotter, okay? So let's say now we're getting into the 70s versus, let's say, high 40s. I don't know if those are equally comp- comparable. Should we say low 50s what, and low 70s? on the opposite 70s? ends of the spectrum? Yes. I think first we have to find the perfect, let's let's establish what the perfect weather okay. is. The, the agreeable, amenable weather. This is going to be interesting. Should we all, should we all I say mean, it at me, once? To me, it's 70 and crisp. I say, I say. I was going to say 68. 71 to 69, right in that range. Okay. Just Aver- average right. humidity. Yeah. You so want to average it out, average it out average to 69? Humidity. Sure. Let's say 69. Yeah. Uh, no homo. As, as three guys should. Yes. You can't 69 with three guys. So it doesn't even matter. It's not even weird. Now you're getting to complex. Com- you can 71 functions. with three guys. You could do like a devil thing. <laughs> we have to do the, some, some numerics. Yeah, you have to do a folding Hannah in the back seat posture. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah folded in the back seat. Human Hannah's centipede. just catching strays the whole episode. <laughs> She's killing us. Um, okay, so 69 degrees okay, 69. is in the center. Okay. Between 40 and 60% uh, percent humidity. That's the average range. Okay. We'll do 69. Okay, see 69. So then as you start to creep up or down from there, you know, very quickly, I would say it gets too hot before yeah, it gets... 100%. Because mm-hmm. 79 is already bordering on like this is... It's, it's a hot day. Especially if it's a New York 79. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then that gross humidity. 59, which is... you. That's fine. It also depends on what time of the year we're coming from. Because 59 coming from winter is shorts and hoodie weather. True. But 59 coming from summer is like, I'm layered the fuck up. Totally. I might bring out the Montclair. That's true, dude. I don't know about that. I think it's the same either way. Because it is actually. You get to wear sweatshirts for the first time in a couple months going into the fall. Yeah. Okay, but what about this? I would take 35 over 90 any day, but I would take 100 over 15. Now, I know that those aren't like linear, but you no, get no, what no, I'm saying. These are like saying. the progressions of the temperature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A hundred's yeah. obviously terrible. You'd rather be, like if it's going to be too hot or too cold, you'd rather be you'd rather be on the cold side. But if it's going to be unbearable. Unbearable be cold is, is hurts. tougher than unbearable yeah, heat. It hurts physically. Assuming that you have all of the modern luxuries, yeah. air conditioning, et cetera. Because like Minnesota or Miami, that's, that's essentially what we're asking. Minnesota yeah. winter or Miami summer. It's going to be hot in Miami, but that's where I'm going to be. hundred percent. All day. I, don't know. I like the winter. Yeah, but it might be. It might be. Uh, now I think we're getting into genetic predisposition. This is turning into like yeah. white boy shit. <laughs> 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 Me too, though. Me too, bro. I like, like to layer up. Yeah, and I think I have better winter clothes. Yeah. So I mean, just not to be like if it makes y'all feel better, superficial. But I, I'd rather be rocking my my winter fits than my summer fits. No matter if it makes y'all feel better, I have what? plenty of black and Latino friends who feel very strongly about winter. And there's like an ongoing group chat like battle, and I'm on the hot side, and they're on the cold side. Gotcha. So a lot of, and I'm in the minority. So mm-hmm. gotcha. and not in the minority just because there's a lot of minorities in the group chat ethnically. I'm in the hot cold minority. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. I just wanted I wanted to be known that at never there was never a point at this show where I actually believed that just because JC is Puerto Rican and Cuban that it means that he was wired to but deal it, with the. But it is a fair question. <laughs> I didn't actually believe that, but it I was I was question. just curious, regardless, to bring it up. These are the conversations. Um, these are the things we talk about. <laughs> Julia, we are so busy. We're busy boys. We're busy. We're busy boys. Good for us. It's good to be busy. But what comes with that territory is sometimes you don't have time. 
to do things that are very important, like cooking a good meal. This is true, man. This Go, is so true. Going to the grocery store takes a long time. I went to the grocery store a few weeks ago and there was only one lemon left and it was <laughs> repulsive. I saw two or three people pick it up and consider whether or not they should bring it. They left it. And then whatever, whatever meal they were making that required lemon, they had to omit. So, you know, one thing that we like to take advantage of is HelloFresh. We love HelloFresh, man. It's the best. It's an incredible way especially as a person who's like trying to get into cooking or as a person who is not confident as a cook, like HelloFresh really makes it easy. Uh, they have pre-portioned ingredients with very clear specific directions. I know that for me, like one of the most challenging things about preparing for a meal would be gathering everything because I just don't know my way around the supermarket like that. If I need cumin or mm. ginger, like they, they have it all pre-portioned, prepared, ready to go individually wrapped it is so easy it is so great uh i've cooked all sorts of amazing stuff uh thanks to hellofresh so highly recommend getting in there guys and, and using it absolutely hellofresh's pre-portioned ingredients help reduce food waste by up to 45 percent compared to grocery shopping and when you sign up today you'll unlock free appetizers for life Free appetizers for life is solid. Get the party started or enjoy a little pre-dinner treat with an appetizer of your choice in every HelloFresh box for free. Go to HelloFresh.com slash oops apps for free appetizers for life. Wow. One appetizer item per box while subscription is active. That's free appetizers for life at HelloFresh.com slash oops apps. HelloFresh. America's number one meal kit. All right, well, you mentioned something else I thought was interesting, and I'm curious in doing for myself, and I've maybe done at some point, but you were saying that at some point, you, Samantha, were feeling kind of down or for whatever reason, oh, yeah, you don't have to get into bro. the specifics, and you guys had a full-on fucking seance yeah. or whatever. You wrote a bunch of shit down. You lit it on fire. Yeah. And it seems as if you guys have carried that way forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me, tell us about that. So Samantha and I, we're both stand-up comics, and there's a lot of positives that comes from being with somebody who does the same thing as you. Like, the, the biggest positive thing that I would say, like, before we had this moment was that when I'm feeling down and negative about something at work, I don't have to over-explain it or feel like I'm putting a burden on her because she gets everything that I'm saying. Because this bitch at work for me is this bitch at work for Samantha as well. So... That's fun to be understood like that. Where we were, we're in a place of like three months. We kept doing that, kept doing that. And now that's all. We're just only validating negative feelings that we're both having. And like we picked our head up after three months. of like, oh, we're haters for real. <laughs> like not even in a fun way. And like we lost the plot because like we'll have fun and we'll roast people. But that's all we were right, doing. Right. Misery loves company. And then it was shit. like, yo, the, the, misery is the only thing that lives here. And like our relationship was fine. But like our relationship with comedy as a couple was horrible. Mm. So like we got a bunch of sage. We wrote down all these things that we wanted to let go on post-it notes. We lit like two things of sage going at the same time, mad smoke. We set paper on fire, like opened every window and to, and like we we're literally sitting down in a shorts in, in shorts and a hoodie, mm. my hoodie on. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm in my fucking like Jedi zone, dark lane demo. You know tapes. what I'm saying? Let, yes, <laughs> literally <laughs> letting it out. And we're sitting there pretty much on some ohm shit. And then the fire alarm starts to go off <laughs> and like people start banging on our door and we're like, Oh shit, this is, and we were like, that's how, that's how much we needed to let go. And since then it's been a lot easier to like move and maneuver and be like, Hey, you know, that's other people's journey. It's not ours. But yeah, that was big. So were you able to like, Flip like a switch and compartmentalize the negative feelings moving forward. I felt like after that, I was, we still have moments. Obviously we're human, but um, I definitely felt like it's been much easier to move and I'm much quicker to recognize what I'm doing now as opposed to back then when I just thought I was being honest about art, which is a fucking gross place to be because it, it's so subjective and there's so many people that are going to get so many things that have nothing to do with you. And sometimes I forget and Samantha, we forgot together. You know, mm -hmm. to be like, all right, it's not what we think it is. But yeah, it's been really, it's been much more fun since then. Good to do a perspective check-in, everybody. You have uh, to do. Just keep yourself uh, on the chosen path. It's uh, tough, because you don't want to, you don't want to be second to a realization about yourself. Like a big one. Because like, when somebody points out something big about you that you didn't know about, it's like, it's good, but it's like, damn. Mm -hmm. Have I lost this much touch with reality in myself that I don't even know what I'm doing? Totally. That's a scary thing. Totally, totally, totally. Uh, very good. All right. So last thing I want to ask you about, uh, your, your, your hair. Oh yeah, man. 
right? So you got a solid head of hair. Yeah. Uh, you got a thing going. I imagine you've had it like this for a while. I have. How long is the first, is question number one? Uh, I've been growing my hair since, well, it's been long since 2016. 2016, okay. That's eight years now. Was it ever long before that? No, never. Okay. Like, it, it was only long before that in a way, like, where I would let it get messy before I would cut it. Sometimes I had, like, a, I had like a mohawk thing going for a little bit, but it was never, like, long like this. This is crazy when I think about it. And how did that start? How did that happen for you? All right, so it really came about because I have a friend who's a filmmaker in Atlanta, and uh, he tapped me to do this short film that he wanted to work on. And in the film, my character had like, it's like, takes place in like the 70s. So it was like a side part, like swoop down thing. Okay, so I had to grow my hair out to, to get my hair to a certain length where I could achieve that look. And I did it. And then at the end of that movie, um, my character is bald, like completely gotcha, shaven gotcha. in, in a whatever twist or whatever the fuck. Nice. And so that's the last time a razor was put to my head. And the, the idea was that we made this short film for it to get picked up to be a feature length. And I wasn't going to cut my hair until it got picked up to be a feature. And in that time, I just grew my hair out super long. And I was waiting for, all right, when, whenever y'all yeah, say yeah, I'm ready yeah. to cut it. And then, you know, things that this shit doesn't get picked up. If we would look at it now, we'd be like, well, this isn't our best work. Yeah. But like, you know, we thought that that was going to be the thing to change our lives. And then I just grew to love my hair. It was a lot of fun. I started like finding products and stuff. And now I just, it makes me feel really silly when I have it I out like and that. bouncing. It's, I love it. I love what it does for me on stage. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's, and that's what I started. Um, so I'm I'm asking this uh, because I had long hair for a while. Yeah. Now I've seen some headshots, man. I saw your headshot yeah, journey. I have had many different looks in yeah. my in my uh, during my journey, and I had really long hair one time. And I remember at one point it got out of hand. Yeah. My hair was too. It was like long and silky. It looked yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> uh, but at, during that time, like some hot girl or something was like. I love your hair. Yeah. It looks so and so and so or like whatever she's, I don't remember specifically what she said, but mm. from that moment I got attached to the idea that women love my hair. Yeah. And that was that. Yeah. Until one day I was with somebody who wanted me to cut it. Yeah. And then I cut it. But like if your girl Did fucks you with your like hair, that? like, no, she was basically like, I think you need a haircut. And I was Damn. like, oh. I was like really into this girl too. Is this, is this not Hillary? Not Hillary. Okay. I've had short hair since I've known Hillary. That's, that's, uh, how did that make you feel? Did you, did you feel any type of way about that? Or did you take it as like honest feedback on she, your appearance? She, I think she was like delicate enough about it. Mm. And she was like, maybe like, you it would look cute if you got like, so you know what I mean? Like, it wasn't like your hair sucks. It was more like, and then I, then when I cut my hair, I looked really good yeah, at, that, at this point. And then she was like, uh, she took responsibility for it. Nice. But it's funny that if you have a certain hairstyle and your girl fucks with it, you, that's just going to be your hair forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is, is that the case? Oh, you yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she loves, loves it. it. She loves it. I will also say, I think you got microaggressed, brother. I'm not going to lie to you. She was like, you'd be kind of <laughs> cute. You, That girl did to you what my grandmother has been doing to me and my siblings since we were born. Like, you really that? Mm. You're a little skinny. Ta flaquita. Oh, God. And it's like, that, that's what she did to you. What, what Was she ethnic? Uh she, she like she had a few generations yeah. removed, but, that's, but the that's, original, you, yeah. that that it makes me sad that you cut it. But obviously, you look great, Thank and you. I know I would look good if I cut it. But like you know, you, you shouldn't have made to you shouldn't have been made to feel like you would have looked better. Did you put up a fight, or was she like you look good with a haircut? I, I and you're like, really, okay, I think <laughs> I, I, I probably initially put up a fight, knowing that I eventually would not yeah. put up a fight. Type of deal. Gotcha. Um, but that brings up another interesting point. Is it like a Latin thing to tell people where their weight is? Yes. Okay. So I've, like, I have a joke about this that I don't do anymore. It was in my Netflix thing about how the guy who uh, he does, he's like the landscaper of one of my friends who has like a really nice property. He's like a Venezuelan guy. Mm. Every time he sees me, actually everybody who works there mm. will tell me mm. how, how they think I look. Yeah. And it's never good. <laughs> I'm either too skinny or too fat. Yeah. And and I, I do want you to have peace in the fact that there's no place to be. There's no place to be. No matter where you are, you're getting you criticized. Something. There's nothing you can be. And that's like the same person who like you're in amazing shape and they're, you sit down for dinner. And they're like, I don't know if they have raw horse food here. Yeah. Sorry, dude. You might have to eat like a French fry tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that person, there's like, just <laughs> nothing. There's, you can't make everybody happy. And I think Latin people in general, they find joy in just putting something on you. And knowing that you're going to go home and think about it. I don't know if that's a specifically <laughs> Latin thing, but I can, for sure, that is my experience. I love that. Yeah, yeah dude, my insane. shit. The dude doesn't speak English really either. So when he see me, he'll be like, Poppy. <laughs> <laughs> dude, and it's wild. Yo, they know how to communicate it so with so much levity, but like it hurts so Bro, bad. Bro, it's brutal. And that's what makes, because the, the fact that 
you can feel how free they feel to just tell you about yourself. Bro, I'm afraid to go over there because <laughs> I don't want to be told where I like, I know what I look like, guys. Okay, yeah. I don't need, or like, then this was funny too. I was in denial, like, it was during the pandemic. I've been working out a lot, right? But like, I was just getting like beefy. Yeah, so dude. Like, but I, he was like, Bobby. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and dude, and I'm sorry for anybody who's seen me do this joke, but he literally then goes, after I went like this, he went, no, Bobby. <laughs> and he starts going, <laughs> <laughs> is that not crazy? Yo, I don't. I, I know it's meant from a place of love, but it is so objectively wild. Yeah, and that it has lasted this long, and and unfortunately, <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm just gonna have to do it to my kids too, just because <laughs> just because it's a part of becoming a humble person. Right. But yeah, Samantha but, gets that from from like people in her life all the time. So whenever we go out and we, we're meeting with people in her family we haven't seen in a while, I know it's about to be a time. Mm. I know it's about, and she does too. She's about to get a full rundown. And on she and she and there and there's nowhere she can be. Yeah, dude, yeah, totally. totally. Her mom did a really funny thing once. That she, I think it's it's also less of a Latin thing and sometimes a parent thing. Um, so Samantha was quitting her job and in the process of getting a new one, but there was a lengthy amount of time. There was like six weeks between her last paycheck at the old job and her first paycheck at the new one. It was a long yeah. time, right? And I was working at the time of doing comedy. I was like, baby, quit the job. This job sucks. Wait till you get the new one. I'll take care of everything until then. And I was comfortable to do that. And then... So she's talking to her mom about what she's going through <laughs> and she's like, you know, I, I want to leave this job and, and I want to, you know, and, and I, I, I don't want to work. I don't want to work in this time. And then her mom's like, yeah, isn't JC working? Let him pay for everything. You got a man, let him pay for stuff. <laughs> she's tired. She's like, let him pay. He'll pay. And then Samantha was like, yeah, he said the same thing. He offered to pay. She's like, you know, you should never depend on a man. Uh, classic. <laughs> classic. <laughs> I was like, yo, that's so funny. No matter what was actually happening, it, it's not about what's going on and what's right. It's about giving a different perspective yes. than the one that you feel like the person has. Exactly. Yeah. And that is a crazy thing too, where you get someone to agree with you yeah. and then you want to show them the other side of the thing that yeah. you just got them to agree with you on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That it's is hysterical. absolutely brutal. It's so, it's my favorite thing about humanity. I love that. <laughs> it's like, it doesn't, you, you're not standing on anything, but just the opposite of right, whatever's right. being said. And I love that. Do you guys hang with her friends more or your friends more? Um, I would say we do both equally but it's easier to see my friends because I have like, I'm in like a 16 person, 16 dude group chat. So there's just more friends and her friends are at a different part of their life. Like they all have kids, multiple kids and live farther where my friends, some of them have a, a kid or two, but like there's many more that are many that are very accessible. And that's like your boys. Yeah. That's, those are my, my guys. Like from your whole life, from college on. Gotcha. I got a couple boys from high school that I, that I don't see as much cause I don't go home as much, but like my guys from college, I see one of them at least every two weeks. Nice, nice. That's fun. And mm. it, we were talking about this in our, in our little car journey, but it's good to have outside of comedy friends Yeah, if you do comedy just because it's nice to have the separation in yeah, a way, you, right? You, you need it, man. It's you nice. Because comedy gets so heavy and it, it's so all-encompassing because there's a very thin, maybe non-existent line between work and not work. Right. Because like when you're out at the club, you're hanging out with people and technically it's a work hang, mm -hmm. but like it's meant to feel like a friendship hang. And if you're doing it right, you're crushing in a way that's friendship. But it, if that line gets blurred and you're like annoyed by everybody that's around you, you have to have a place to go to like put it, like take a step back for a second. Totally, dude. Yeah. And I do see comics who pull it off nicely. Yeah. Where they like... uh have all comedy friends. Yeah. And I don't understand. I don't understand. But they either. don't, it doesn't seem to like affect them. But, yeah. I, but there is a world where people who only have comedy friends, all they know to talk about is, is comedy, comedy, which could be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Some people like to hear about comedy. Oh, 100%. And there are comics who do that well. Yeah. But there are other comics who are like, really weird to talk to in yeah. this way, where it's like talking to your uncle or something who like, he has these really specific references to yeah. periods of time that you're not familiar with. Yes. They're not able to like come in the middle. There's a, we, we do the same thing every single day and there's a huge disconnect. Right. Yeah. And that, yeah. that's a, that is a crazy thing, especially when the, the only thing that we talk about is the thing that we have in common. Right. And there's still a disconnect. I don't know. I, I think it, it's tough, but I think I heard Chris Rock say that, you know, once you do comedy for a certain amount of time, all your closest friends are going to be from comedy because it's what you do all the time. And then, you know, Chris Rock, maybe he's, Maybe he's a loser. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe that's all he has is <laughs> comedy, fired. which is not, which is not like he's one of the greatest to ever do it. But you know, maybe that lends itself to this is kind of all he's ever done. Yeah, totally. So totally. he didn't have a part of his life where this wasn't the main thing. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? No, and yeah, as I get older in comedy too, I definitely have very close friends who are comedians, yeah. but I also have very close friends. And who there's are not. 
there's plenty of cool ass people in comedy and that's just you got to find who those are to you and it doesn't have to it's you're just friends who both happen to do comedy mm-hmm. rather than comedy friends i think right. when i get like when i see the people in my life from comedy that i'm closest to that's how i have come to feel about them the people that i met through this thing that i love but i am now brought to my outside life well there's this other thing too where we were talking about this as well uh when you're hanging with comics, there is a little bit of a difference of the way that you need to approach certain subject matter yeah. where you where you can be completely free in that regard with non-comedy people. Yeah, 100%. If it's talking about maybe you're complaining about something in comedy to somebody who is not doing as well as you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to know, the, you need to be able to read the room. Yeah. Or maybe you're with somebody who's not good at that yeah. and they're making you feel bad oh my while God. they complain about yeah. the stuff that you wish you could be doing. So yeah, like yeah, it yeah. goes in both directions, For but sure. when you're hanging with your like non-comedy friends, you can kind of take a deep breath and you're like, we're all hanging. Yeah. There's no inside baseball here. Yeah, like, oh, facts. They think what I'm doing is cool. Like it's yeah. fun to talk about it to them. Like even if they don't know shit or they yeah. ask like stupid questions, like it's, it's better sometimes than being around comedy. Yeah, hundred percent. And I can, well, around my friends, I can just have my opinion and not have to defend it. And also, so it's like, you want to, you don't want to say too much sometimes, so you're, you'll let other people sit, talk and you'll sort of respond or do whatever. But also, if you do that too much, you're like a bitch. Yeah. And there's <laughs> Fact, there's bro. this like weird oh like primal nature thing in comedy that's like really backward. It's that's where funny. like the big guy, the, the alpha male, will be in the room Hold and everyone's court. like, yeah. like, and they can do whatever they want. And everybody's, it's so weird, dude. It is so weird. And in corporate America, there are really wonderful sort of practices to kind of keep those things at bay yeah. that don't exist in comedy, yeah. which is part of the reason why I love this guy so much too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He worked in, Thank a, you. he worked in sales <laughs> for a while at a big company and he is so professional yeah. without being a lame and he's very easy to work with and I love him and he's, and he's quite talented. Oh, yeah, uh, he, he, he's checks all the boxes. Thank you, Julia. Uh, you're welcome. But he, Thanks, but bro. in comedy, bro, like you just deal with these egos and these Unchecked, personalities bro. and people who just can't leave it at the door. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot. It can, it can get to be a lot, but like back to what you asked me before, that is the fun part about going home to somebody who also gets it. Cause I'll come share my story. and she'll be like, let me tell you a better one. I'm like, mm. Oh, let's just get into it. Man. Mm-hmm. It feels nice. <laughs> <laughs> feels nice to get it out before bed because you truly get it out. Totally, bro. Totally. One comment could like ruin everything. It could close so many doors for you. <laughs> it dare you. It is. Sure. It is like stressful. Yeah. Not that our green room on Saturday had that vibe. Nah. But I'm just thinking like from my experience, like I've heard of people saying things about other people and then that's like set them back by a lot. Yeah. And you just, you know. And sometimes it just becomes a funny story. All right, guys. Well, listen, Oops, the podcast is great. JC having you on. JC Mendoza, where can we follow you? What do you got coming out? Uh, you can follow me at Peach Fuzz Poppy on all social medias, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, all of that. Um, also follow Soft Launch Podcast. It's a podcast between me and my girlfriend, Samantha Santos, who's also a stand-up comedy, who's also uh, Puerto Rican, also from New York. And we just talk about life takes. That comes out every Wednesday on all platforms, Soft Launch Podcast. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Lynchy? Gucci, send us emails at oopsthepodcast at gmail.com. Check me out at Ryan is really polite on all socials and uh yeah yeah. grab some magic mind links in the bio Mm. um or link is in the episode description 40 percent off with our promo code all the info's in the description awesome and uh i'm gonna be in portland at helium on the 19th of june followed by new york city at the stand the 18th of july pasadena california at the ice house on the 3rd of august followed by Coastal Creative, St. Pete, Florida, 20th, 21st of September. A bunch more stuff coming on. Go in the link in my bio and uh, let me know where you're, where you're at so that I can try to hit every city that I haven't been to. Uh, and I can let you know when I'm coming to town. So that's it. At Not Julio, I the podcast. Good talking to you guys. See ya.